guys, welcome back to my vlog. Today we are at the Kilburn Mill in Massachusetts and this is where I flip this vlog house is, guys. And this is my hometown, so this is nuts. I've been here before and it is beautiful. And uh, he has an Instagram and uh, that you must check out. And it's just something to see, so I figured I'd show you guys today. So let's go. Looks like there's a lot to take in. Okay guys, so, wow. This place is overwhelming. I'm going to spend some time on each dollhouse to go by and look in. It looks like he's got some good light on each um, house. They're all very, very, very nicely decorated. Yeah. This is the owner. Hi, Nathaniel Ellis here, owner of Flip This Dollhouse. Welcome yeah. to my shop. I love this. <laughs> this is overwhelming. I'm like, um, so tell me, um, what got you into building dollhouses? So I remember when I was like seven years old, I saw a dollhouse at an antique shop, and I was fascinated. And I remember opening the door and sticking my hand down the hallway and just thinking it was the coolest thing ever. And it wasn't, I could tell it wasn't really a, a toy toy it was more of like a display piece because it was perfect. I, I remember it had wallpaper and lighting and hardwood floors and uh, baseboard molding, crown molding, carpets. It, it just looked real. So I, from that age on, I wanted a dollhouse, but I never got one. We, we were very poor, but I was, I, I was also too ashamed to ask for one as a boy because I knew I would be teased by friends and family. So I remember thinking as a little boy, if I get a dollhouse, how am I going to hide it? which is horrible, but it's the truth. So then when I turned 18, 20 years ago, I started hoarding them. And I think part, it was partly to fill the void from childhood, like I didn't have one. So now I went crazy. But um, so my private collection just kept, in, kept getting bigger and bigger. And I ended up doing interior design for a living. So I realized that the reason I love dollhouses is I love old homes and I love decorating. I love saving old things like dollhouses and I just love nesting, I like staging. Um, so here I am running the largest dollhouse shop in the world, which I never really planned on, it just kind of happened. But um, it really is a love for old homes, a love for decorating, and a love for saving things that bring people joy. Because dollhouses end up abandoned in people's attics and basements. So usually when I pick them up, that's where they are and we bring them back to life. We clean them up, we stage them, sometimes we fix it up a little or paint it, and then we sell it in the shop as is. And basically, I'm just finding new homes for dollhouses. So I consider myself like a rescue shelter for dollhouses. Now you were just on HBO? Yeah, so I had a dollhouse on HBO on episode six of The Gilded Age. That was really exciting because it's from the creator of Downton Abbey and Downton Abbey was like my favorite show ever. So out of all the shows in the world that could have bought a dollhouse, it was Gilded Age. I was so excited. It's not official yet because they're still pitching the idea to all the networks, but I believe in it and the production company believes in it. The last update that I got from them was that they had partnered with a second production company so that when they pitch the idea to all the networks, it has more strength. So they really seem to believe in the idea. And when they came to me, I guess they were already working on a show on interior design and miniature, and they wanted to feature me as one of the guests. Well, they interviewed me on camera for two and a half hours, and at the end of the interview, they were like, you know what, we think that you and your shop would be enough for a show, so now we're interested on just doing a show on your shop, oh, an wow. unscripted reality show. And they said we would want it to be something like Storage Wars, American Pickers, or Pawn Stars. And I mean, there would need to be like a story for the first season, like a problem that arises and a resolution at the end, which is easy because there's a million problems that you face when you're running a hobby-based business during a pandemic. But I will see what happens. If it doesn't happen, that's okay. And if it happens, I know that it won't be all good things 
because sometimes when you get that much exposure, um, when you really put yourself out there in this world, you can't take it back mm -hmm. and not everyone's going to love me. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how it changes my life if that happens. But then the other thing that happened, which is almost just as exciting as a reality show, is um, I was um, in April, ABC slash Disney came here, a production company from ABC came here and they purchased um, three fully furnished and accessorized dollhouses to be on a new show on ABC called The Fatal Flaw. So it's called The Fatal Flaw because it's about <laughs> real life murders. And the fatal flaw is the mistake that the killer makes that gets them caught. So they used my dollhouses to stage the murder, the crime scenes. So they actually sent us the, the real crime scene photos with everything that you would see in a crime scene. And we spent like a hundred hours staging these three houses just like the crime scenes. We didn't do dead bodies or blood splatter, but we did everything else. Curtains, rugs, furniture, accessories, lamps, you name it. Well. They came in and purchased everything, which, you know, there was no obligation for them to purchase everything, but they did. And they said, you know, this is the first season of the show. Each episode will feature one of my dollhouses. But if the show does well, then it, it would get renewed for a second season and they would have to come in for maybe 10 or 12 more dollhouses. And um, Disney actually paid the bill because Disney owns ABC. And when they paid the bill, they, they had me sign up in their invoicing system. So if I have any future bills, I can just invoice them. And after I registered in their system, they sent me an email saying, congratulations, you are now an official Disney vendor. And I was like, well, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna put that on my resume that I hopefully never need. So that was awesome. And that's, that's almost more exciting to me than a reality show because reality show is gonna change your life. This, you're still in the background. Mm -hmm. But it was it was very fun. I don't know, but it's um, definitely your own little niche. Yeah. So the show is on every Thursday this month at 10 p.m. on ABC. Right over here, I sell micro machines, and these are mostly from the 80s and 90s, and they're super popular again. They're really collectible. Um, specifically, toys from the 80s are really hot right now because that's the demographic that's collecting people that grew up in the 80s are right. collecting like actively. I've noticed that. Mm -hmm. So these, I've done pretty well with them. I think I've got 3,000 micro machines in here, but the, mm -hmm. the funny thing is, is uh, about 10 years ago, I sold my entire micro machines collection at a yard sale for like 40 bucks. Well now, one car can be worth like 100 bucks. Wow. So the value went way up because people are into it again. Yeah, my mom wants to get really, 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 really,
Here, little paintings. Oh my gosh, how cute is this? Look at the little apron set up over here. So, this is like an artist. See her over here? So cute. Here are some big horses. It's a little like living room for Christmas. What a good idea for like a little like room set up. Is this is like a St. Patrick's Day set up. This woman is relaxing. 
sitting on a cool couch. He literally has everything and the kitchen sink. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> Toilets and sinks. So cute. So now we're gonna go to his houses because these dioramas are a good idea for your house. Wow, look at this one, guys. I love this setup. I love the orange. I'm talking low because I'm in here people are in here as well so but look at that oh I'm gonna go down little setups I love these little like drape whatever those things are called the cruises that's so cool and like Victorian he's got some more on this level different couches
celluloid dolls, a little coupai. Oh, look at that. That's neat. Little babies. This is a Nancy Ann, one of the plastic ones. Look at this little. This one's face is killing me. Look at this. This is a little saloon. I don't know if you can see the Busy pouring drinks, all the bottles on the back, and the barmaid. Wow.
He's so considerate, this guy. He sets up chairs so you can sit and look inside so you don't hurt your back. Wow. baby room over here so cute a little bathroom oh my gosh Here's another Ari doll, the German doll, rubber doll. So pretty. Thank you. 
This one's Halloween. This is the haunted um, house. This is kind of neat. I like this. Looks like it's her house. Wow, the place is huge, guys. This looks like could be lovers on the porch together.
Yeah, this is really exciting. Yeah.